So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about Love & Hip Hop cast members Erica Mena and Spice getting into an altercation, which led to some not so nice words and some racially motivated insults. Can I start off by saying that I am surprised that Love & Hip Hop is still going. Like who is actively watching Love & Hip Hop? Like I know people still like the show and I actually would watch it, but I feel like the cast members don't really entice me to watch the show at this point. I started watching Love and Hip Hop in the 10th grade back in 2012 and I started watching the Atlanta season and that was the first season that they actually had. It had Stevie J, Jocelyn, Mimi Faust, Carly Red, K. Michelle. That's the era that I remember and I feel like the first three seasons of Love and Hip Hop ATL were classic reality TV, especially when Stevie J and Jocelyn went crazy at the reunion. That was iconic reality TV. But I am surprised that the show is still running, still has a following, and that all of these people are still able to exist on the platform. Not even hating, I'm just still a little shocked. So in this instance, a new season of Love & Hip Hop ATL has premiered. And of course, in typical Love & Hip Hop fashion, they're going to start off with a big commotion. Erica Mena and Spice are sitting down to discuss whatever problems that they have, apparently over some he said, she said things that Erica's ex-husband and Spice's friend, who is Safari Samuels, said. And I believe that the meeting was set up by Shekinah, who was a friend to both. Now again, I haven't watched the show in years. The last time I watched Love & Hip Hop was probably around 2017, so it's been a long time for me. But from the clip that I saw, I know Shekinah's personality is like very over the top as it is, but I can't help but think that she plays it up even more for the cameras because part of it was just irritating me, like shut up, but my other half was like, she's completely right for what she was saying in regards to what happened during and after the scuffle. Anyway, if you remember back in May, I believe Spice went on like a 12 minute rant about Erica Mena for whatever reason. And I'm pretty sure it probably alludes back to this incident that just took place on TV. And I'm not really sure exactly what their beef is, but I can tell that Spice isn't too fond of Erica because Erica has a victim mentality. And then Erica isn't too fond of Spice because Spice seems to be the type of person that checks people and holds people accountable. If you are watching, you can tell me more about what the problem is. Trust me, I truly don't know. I can only judge off of what I saw. So once they sat down, they were having this conversation and things went completely left. Now, I'm not sure if YouTube is gonna let me play this. If they don't, I will link it down below. But if they do, let's have a look. So I don't even know why I thought that YouTube was gonna let me use this clip. It was immediately blocked and flagged. Love and Hip Hop slash MTV slash VH1 slash Viacom slash Mona Scott. Y'all don't be letting none of the commentators actually really commentate on your stuff, but I get it, money, money, money. I really tried it, but YouTube, they got me, they flagged me. So check the pinned comment down below so y'all can see exactly what happened. So there are many reasons why this is hard to ingest and there's so many things to say about this but overall I'm like so completely tired I'm tired of the bickering I'm tired of this being the representation of women of color I'm tired of the insults that are below the belt I'm tired of the fake scenarios or just the scenarios that are set up solely for TV and entertainment and I'm tired of everyone acting as if all these women are doing are playing a character they may be playing it up for the reactions for cameras but I'm not going to let that be the reason why I let anybody off the hook because at the end of the day you're a human being with a brain and a mouth. You do know what you're doing and you know what you're saying. So I wanna talk about this as this was highly requested and very viral. So I've broken this video down into one overall main talking point. So without further ado, Let's get right into this video. So my one and overall main talking point is this was racist and both are very wrong. I feel like people just don't remember that Erica Mena is this person. Let me remind you of who Erica Mena is. Back in 2015, club promoters accused Erica Mena of not only being racist, but literally saying the exact same thing that she said to Spice in this recent clip. The Neighborhood Talk decided to remind us of who Erica Mena is. And there was an article that said, Tracy arrives back at the hotel and says staff informed her that they overheard Erica saying, I don't like working with these black monkeys, saying, I don't usually do business with these black monkeys. But Tracy took it with a grain of salt because she wasn't sure if the staff was just trying to stir up more drama, which is crazy because that goes to show the toxic culture of love and hip hop. But anyway, now Tracy was on love and hip hop back in the day. I remember watching the season that she was on. She was the DJ and she seemed pretty accomplished for what she was doing. But this just goes to show that Erica Mena is the same person that she was then that she is now. And it should be of no surprised that this will come out of her mouth. It is very racist to equate being a monkey, looking like a monkey, acting like a monkey, anything monkey-like to anyone of black or African descent, especially if they are darker skinned, because we can play coy, stupid, and oblivious as if that word and the way that it was said doesn't have racial roots, but it does. 
I don't know what the obsession is with equating black people, and in this case, a black woman, to primates like apes, gorillas, monkeys. Like, it's very racist and so hurtful and disrespectful because nobody wants to be compared to an animal for any reason. But the fact that there's a racist liaison between black women and the aggression, the look, and the darkness of those types of animals, that's completely off the charts of being offensive. So Erica knows exactly what she's doing and what she was saying when she said it. She cannot for one second think that her words classify as just a simple insult because there's a racial background and she's a repeat offender referring to black women as monkeys. But she will take a black man's monkey penis and put it in her pretty pink pulsing, piping hot punishing, put it on a pedestal punani, make it make sense. It's very finicky for me to talk about these topics sometimes because if I say one thing about certain tendencies of a certain group of people, people act as if I'm speaking about everybody or as if there aren't outliers or that everybody has to be a certain way. However, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I find that many Latina women who promote themselves as the ones who are the most liked by different types of men and especially black men feel as though the attention they receive from black men allows them to be put on a pedestal and inherently shit on black women. And of course, this doesn't pertain to every Latina. Of course, this doesn't speak for everybody, but there is this underlying tendency in many of the mindsets of some Latina women, especially those who grew up or have been around black areas. New York is a melting pot. You can get anything in New York, but in certain boroughs where there may be more of a Latin presence or a black presence, I find this to be pretty accurate. So I think once upon a time, I told y'all that by the time I moved out of Philly, I was living in a town called York, Pennsylvania. And if you've ever been to York, Pennsylvania, it's one of the smallest towns ever. It really isn't that diverse. You literally have the Spanish area of the city. You have the black area of the city that really kind of coincides with the Spanish area. And then you have the white areas of the city. And my dad obviously worked in the city. And I remember his business was in a very Latin populated area where all of the friends that I would make when I would go to work with my dad would be a lot of Latinas. And there was always this, I'm better than, or the boys like me more, or I have this spiciness, I have this look that entices people and the black girls are just ghetto and the black girls are just ratchet and the black girls are just not better than me. And again, for the umpteenth time, this obviously doesn't pertain to everybody, but I feel like I firsthand experienced this many points throughout my life. And I think on the flip side, you see some black men who like Latina women kind of promote this mindset as well and open opens up this dialogue for disrespect against black women in this way. Erica Mena is an example of this mindset, point blank. And if she felt that Spice disrespected her by speaking on her child, there were maybe a hundred different options of clapbacks that she could have used. But she decided to hit below the belt. She decided to make it about Spice's look, Spice's race, Spice's appeal, and being a darker skinned woman. And we all know that. Don't try to tell me, oh, it had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with that. Because what she tried to do was say, hey, I'm better than you and you look like a monkey and that's something that they refer to black women as and because she's not black she thinks she's better so remember a few weeks back Erica was called out for essentially black fishing she had posted a picture of her looking like super tanned bronze black if you will and that's why people had a problem because you try to distance yourself from anything dealing with a black woman but when it's time to cosplay and get some type of boost you will definitely go and do it when I posted my video about pinky doll and how she basically used colorism to promote herself somebody commented on my video saying that not everything's about colorism and that I'm so insecure because I can't stand the fact that I'm a black woman who isn't light skinned. And I think you have to be smart when you make comments like that because of course not everything is racism or colorism. But when you're at the bottom end of the social ladder in what society finds attractive, acceptable, accessible, and resourceful, you learn to see that a lot of things in your life do come down to race and things dealing with color. So no, I'm not making this up and no, I'm not insecure. There are hundreds of thousands of black women that can attest to certain groups of Latina women feeling better than them, thinking black women are beneath them for many different reasons. Part of that reason are just the blatant colorism and racism that everybody has against black people. And the other side of the reason is because there are certain black men who allow that to transpire. Erica has only been with black men, at least publicly. She's dated Bow Wow. She's dated and married and had kids with Safari Samuels. She's dated Rich Dollars on the show. And they've catered to this knowing who she was and not caring because their disdain for black women might just be the same as Erica's. I feel like Erica was completely wrong and very racist and people are calling for her to be fired from the show. Now, I don't think she's gonna be fired. Look at how long she's been on Love & Hip Hop. She's probably one of their top earners and top people. And because she also did this before and they let it slide, that's why she was able to do it again. Of course, we're in a different social era and climate where you can't make comments like this and get away with it or at least not be dragged for it. But Love & Hip Hop chose to air this. So no, she's not gonna be fired. They're going to take the backlash 
backlash, people will forget about this in about two weeks and she will continue to be the underlyingly racist woman that she is. And what baffles me about Erica is that your kids are half black. They have both Latin and African descent in them. And Erica's mother is Dominican, her father is Puerto Rican, but she clearly is not a black Latina. And I would love to find out more information about the denominations of Latin people in terms of race and in which cases they consider themselves of African descent. Because there are Afro Latinas and I feel like it still confuses people as to the background and the lineage, but it's very possible. But I find it interesting that now that everyone thinks they're so smart about race and ethnicity because these conversations have been going on, people are so quick to consider someone black because certain Latin people have African descent, i.e. Dominicans. But are we now gonna consider all Dominicans black? Or are we gonna be smart enough to know that just because you have African ancestry, that doesn't necessarily make you black? And looking at Erica's parents, her mom is clearly not a black Dominican. I swear this has now been like the new thing. Everybody wanted to consider Cardi B somewhat black because one of her parents is Dominican. That doesn't make any sense. At most, she would be multiracial. You have one black parent, that doesn't make you black. That makes you multiracial or biracial. I find it funny that everyone wants to claim black when it's convenient. Everybody wants to say, oh, well, my granddaddy, uncle, sister, cousin, babysitter, bus driver was black, so I can consider myself black or I can say the N-word. And I understand that in New York, it seems like everybody of color uses the N-word. If you Latino, you say it. If you're black, you're saying it. If you're mixed, you're saying it. That's a New York thing. But in real life, just because you have part black in your ancestry or even directly in you, that does not make you a black person. I've always used this example, but if you take a red piece of clay and a blue piece of clay, you don't get red and you don't get blue. You get purple, a completely new chemical makeup. You cannot separate the two. What do they call it? A homogenous mixture. Shout out to seventh grade science class. And of course, that doesn't directly make sense to genetics and all, but just on a basic understanding, you can't mix two different things together and call it one of those things, especially if you can't separate it like you can in a heterogeneous mixture. But let me not get too scientific because when I start making sense, people start to lose their brains. Also, Erica telling Spice that she should have died when Spice had a near death incident in the past is wilder than the wild, wild west and the wildcats from High School Musical because excuse me? We're gonna wish death on people now? I think Erica is the spicy Latina that isn't spicy in a good way, no pun intended. Erica Mena represents a racist Latina woman who thinks she's better, she thinks she's above, and she's never seen black women as anything but a crutch to promote herself and inflate her ego. She said it once, she said it now, and I'm pretty sure she'll say it again, even with the backlash. She doesn't like black women and she probably never have, and that completely showed in this interaction with Spice. Now, let me get to Spice real quick. I feel like when you make comments about people's children, you're asking asking for trouble, like see me see trouble. So I agree with the online narrative that Spice said something that was out of line and Erica said something that was completely out of line. It's almost like Erica brought a gun to a knife fight. However, we all know that speaking on anyone's children or their family situations in general will warrant a bad reaction. So I don't know what Spice thought she was going to achieve by saying what she said because Spice herself is a mother. And I'm pretty sure if Erica would have told Spice anything in relation to her kids, her kids' feelings or her parenting, Spice would have taken offense. So in terms of catty behavior and who's right and who's wrong, both of these grown women are wrong. You can have these conversations, you can gag the girls, you can bicker back and forth, you can be catty without hitting below the belt. And that's all I was watching. Neither one of them get a thumbs up from me because it was fighting fire with fire on both ends. I feel like because Spice was the one who is racially targeted, there's some people trying to excuse what came out of her mouth, but I'm sorry, but no. Like, because no, like absolutely because no. We always say that kids are off limits, so let's use that same energy right now to say that Spice was definitely wrong. And it can't be, well, all she was saying was that Erica's son doesn't even like her. It doesn't matter. You don't bring that up, especially not about someone who is a minor. Erica's son is literally 16 years old. He is a kid. I don't think Spice got what she deserved when Erica told her that she's a blue monkey because that is definitely too far and it takes the argument to a different level. So no, I'm not gonna give Erica props for going harder than Spice did just because Spice said something insulting first. But at the same time, both of these women are grown and both of these women are mothers. So yes, it's reality ratchet TV and we wanna be entertained, but I'd rather had just seen them flip the tables and pull hair and fight versus express such hateful and mean dialogue towards one another because it didn't do anything for either one of them. I think I was watching another clip of Erica Banks and I think Rennie Rucci who are also in love and hip hop and they got into it in a similar way. And I couldn't help but think in my brain, all of these women are older than me, except I found out Erica Banks is 24. 
before, which is crazy. I thought she was way older. So I was thinking, so at what point do you deter away from this? Especially for Erica Mena. She's been on reality TV for so long. And I really wonder if these women have other avenues that work for them that don't deteriorate their character and expose their desperation for clout and attention. Because I'm perfectly fine with reality TV. I like watching it. I would even do it. But it would have to make sense and not paint me out to be like this. In the beginning, once I learned more about Erica Mena's come up, I kind of felt bad for her because if you look back to certain R&B and rap music videos in the early 2000s, you'll see Erica Mena in a lot of them. And when you add it up, she was definitely 15, 16, 17, just completely underage when she was in some of these videos. So it seems like she comes from being exploited, which has probably prompted her to make a lot of bad decisions. But at this point, she's 35. And 35 is not at all old, but it's old enough to not be acting like 25. Love and Hip Hop is here for our ratchet entertainment fix that we all need once a week. Zeus Network kind of gives me my fix. I tried to start watching Jocelyn's Cabaret season four. I think I watched the first two episodes, but it's just not giving like the last two seasons, but I'll try to hang in there. But a lot of this is just super exhausting to see. They're not fighting over anything worthwhile. Their arguments seem to be super contrived and they will go above and beyond and below the belt just for ratings. And I think that's disgusting. Erica, that was racist. Spice, that was wrong. Ladies, do better. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my new song, Let's Go. It is out on all platforms and the link is down below. Make sure you guys check out that video and go stream that for me, okay? Run it up. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. Talk about something else, what's going what's on? That? Went to school, got a degree, I always say it in my song. Nigerian parents raised me by the book. Right. And now look, big stage, heavyweight, uh -huh. money day, uh -huh. business good. Uh -huh. Model girls always looking pretty, just like how they should. I know it's hated saying that I started acting Hollywood. This is how you get when you know you finally getting good. And this is how you act when it's people to get out the hood. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Team Cheeks, Kim, Murray, Chi, Ray, Nens, Jaden, Dominique. Sorry I ain't been back, but my talent's an anomaly. And RIP my cousin Mike. I